Hey, um, another effort yesterday, another milestone, you might call it, another knife in the back, uh, an, another slap in the face to the American worker, uh, another victory for uh, unrestricted capitalism, a, a, a bunch of different ways you can put this. But I'm referring to a ruling by the U.S. Supreme Court yesterday, um, six to three, and the ruling struck down part of of an historic California law that was um, worked on for years by Cesar Chavez. Remember him? United Farm Workers. This is back in the late 60s, early 70s. Hey, I, I, I hope people who listen to this program, this podcast, do remember Cesar Chavez, who worked for the rights of farm workers, seasonal workers, who uh, mostly in the West and Southwest, who had come up from Central America and Mexico to work for the huge corporation-owned farms in that part of the United States, and who were treated like scum, these workers, until Cesar Chavez came along and put together the United Farm Workers. I hope you remember. But the Supreme Court yesterday struck down an historic California law that ruled that agricultural landowners and food processors have a right, constitutional right, to keep union organizers off their property. Now, on a space, I, I guess a lot of right-wingers in this country would say, well, what the hell do you expect? I mean, it belongs to the company. Why should they, uh, why should organizers, union organizers, uh, worker advocates have unrestricted access to private property. Well, in the first place, um, I, I apparently I have an issue with the idea of private property that is dedicated to the production of food. <laughs> I mean, oh my God, <laughs> capitalism just devours everything, doesn't it? But secondly, um, I have resistance to the idea that there should be restrictions placed uh, in the path of people who are organizing workers into unions. Now, my objection to those restrictions carries with it the understanding that the organizers have got to treat the corporation, the workers, the property, with the kind of respect necessary to, to show that they have worker rights or worker interests at heart that they're not there to blow the place up or burn the place down. But that also requires <laughs> that the corporations um, show that they have an interest in making sure that their workers are well-paid, healthy, happy, productive. In other words, what I'm describing here in my scenario is a perfectly balanced situation between workers and owners. And as we know, that sort of balance will probably never be struck in this country. In other countries, that balance exists. But if you go back to, you don't have to go back too far, to the uh, 1930s, 1920s, whenever it was, when uh, Henry Ford used to hire thugs to kill union organizers who were trying to organize the um, Auto industry, United Auto Workers, the, the early organization efforts usually resulted in bloodshed and people dying because people like Henry Ford, who was a Nazi sympathizer, he believed that Hitler had the right idea. Uh, he was also an, an avowed and very fiery anti-Semite. He hated Jews. Henry Ford did. But he figured he had a right to beat people up, kill people, and the U.S. government didn't do anything about it for a while until it became too bloody. But I digress. The ruling by the Supreme Court yesterday, 6 to 3, right down ideological lines, said that the state of California's 
so-called right of access rule, which is what this is, violates property rights protected by the Constitution. And the Constitution states that private property shall not be, now listen up, quote, taken for public use without just compensation. What? Yeah, that, that's what this ruling was based on. Let me go on. Um, Chief Justice John Roberts, who wrote for the majority in this uh, decision, said, quote, the access regulation, that was the rule that the state of California put into effect years ago. The access regulation, Roberts wrote, is not germane to any benefit provided to agricultural employers or any risk posed to the public. The access regulation grants labor organizations a right to invade the grower's property. It therefore constitutes a per se, or by definition, a physical taking. End quote. Um, call me ignorant and stupid, which I certainly claim at various times, depending on what I'm talking about. But my ignorance and stupidity around that interpretation of the Constitution's prohibition against taking leaves me just completely flummoxed. I mean, it, when or, union organizers come on property to organize the workers who are making sure that the company is profitable, I mean, isn't that the idea? If the company is not profitable, it goes out of business, the workers are unemployed. So when organizers come on to make sure that the workers are being treated fairly, compensated justly, uh, not put in some sort of physical danger, that is considered a physical taking? Uh, I don't get it, and, and I probably never will. But anyway, uh, Justice Roberts, in, in writing for the court, he cited as his precedence for ruling, for the court ruling the way it did, two California cases. Now, one of those cases, and I remember this one, this was not that long ago, uh, that case ruled for the owner of a beachfront home in Ventura, California, who objected to giving the public access to the shore, to the beach, because the public would have had to walk a narrow path over what he considered to be his property. He owned access to the Pacific Ocean in, in, that particular, <laughs> in that particular part of California. Now, this is a ruling, I guess, by the California Supreme Court. So it stopped there, or um, I have no idea. But, but the rule is in place in California. The owner of a beachfront home who didn't want to give public access to the shore was allowed to maintain that stance. A court said, yeah, you're right. You don't have to do that. Fuck the public. Oh, I didn't mean to say that. And there was a second case from 2015, which ruled for a grape grower from Fresno, California. This person objected to giving his grapes to a government-sponsored cooperative. Now, not having the case in front of me, I, I don't understand how this grower would have been coerced into giving his grapes to a government-sponsored cooperative. It doesn't say he had to give them free. It doesn't say the owner had to do anything that would harm the owner. I, I guess the owner just didn't like the idea that it was a government-sponsored co-op. Whatever. So, Justice Roberts said in, in, in writing his uh, majority opinion, he said, quote, the upshot of this line of precedent citing those two cases, is the government authorized invasions of property, whether by plane, boat, cable, or beachcomber, are physical takings requiring just compensation. Um, and again, I, I'm, I'm not sure what that means. Just compensations for someone representing workers to show up on corporate property in order to in order to help the workers organize into a union that would 
provide exactly what the workers need and provide what the company actually needs, which is content workers. If I work for your company and I know I'm getting a just paycheck and that I have safety precautions in place that mean I'm not going to fall into a grape crusher and wind up, wind up as part of your, um, your Beaujolais someplace. Um, if I know that my employer is treating me fairly and that it's okay for me to work here because I'm not going to die, well then, doesn't that make sense? In capitalism, no, it does not make sense. In capitalism, the only thing that makes sense is profit, capital. And any way to reduce the costs, whether it is reducing the costs of labor, reducing the costs that might be incurred with installing safety equipment, all of that has to be secondary or not exist in the face of profit. Hi, Truth Seekers. Mike Malloy here. As you know, we've switched formats and are now broadcast exclusively on the Progressive Voices Network. So that means you get fewer program interruptions, no corporate commercials, and lots of profanity. But our format change also means some of our radio listeners no longer hear the program. It's been a while since I mentioned our podcasts, so you may have forgotten that there is a way to listen to this program anytime you need a good dose of screaming. Visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe to our podcast. As a podcast subscriber, you can download the program to your mobile device and take me with you wherever you go. And if you have a friend who needs a dose of truth-seeking, you can give a gift subscription as well. That's MikeMalloy.com and never miss a minute of the uncensored fun and frivolity.